Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're continuing off from where we left off with the base setup, the player movement and spawning of the player, and we just got quickly set up with Cine Machine as well. In this video we're going to continue on with actually animating the player, synchronizing the animations, and if we have time for it at the end we'll also try and look into rigging the player so you know he can actually hold the guns properly and so on for our shooting game. Now getting started, let's open up our player prefab right here, and also for a uh, good measure, I've imported some animations that I just grabbed off of Mixamo. If you're not familiar with Mixamo, it's essentially an animation that's, or a website owned by Adobe that's full of free animations to use. All you have to do is just you click on the animation you want. Let me just refresh so you'll actually see it. Click on the animation that you want and you can, you know, look at it properly, figure out if it's an animation you want to use. You can click download and then you can always download it how you want it. I would say FBX for Unity and you can do it with or without skin. That's up to you, just whether you want this essentially model in there or not. And yeah, it's as easy as that. Then you just download the, the ones that you want. What I've essentially found is a running animation, running backwards animation, and a jog strafing to the right animation. You don't need the strafing left one as well because we can just mirror this one. So I guess first things first, let's actually set up our animations properly. Going into the rigging part of the animations, you can select animation type and we should select humanoid because you know our character is a humanoid character. So we're gonna set it up as humanoid and we're gonna apply. And this is typically the standard that most uh, humanoid type characters follow. Unless they're older, they might be of the generic type, but most will follow the bone rigging setup of a humanoid. Now you can also go into the animation stage and here we have to be on the individual animation. And you can see first things first, here's the name of it. It's just named Mixamo.com right now. I'm gonna call this strafe, right? And we're also gonna add looping time to the animation, which means the animation can loop. If I zoom in here, you can see if I hit play, you can see this is what the animation looks like in Unity. And you can see now it loops fine and it just works, which is exactly what we want. And then I'm just gonna scroll down and click apply. And I'm gonna do this for the rest of them too, renaming. And there we go, now they're all set up. Now the next thing we need to do is set up obviously the player body to work properly. As I mentioned in the last one, I'm using the polygon startup hang from Cinti and they also luckily come with some characters that are humanoid. I'm gonna just select this classic male character, very generic guy. I'm gonna put him in here, make sure that he's standing properly on the ground and then we can actually just remove our body. Now that he's in here, a good thing I always like to do is make sure that he is actually facing the blue arrow. This is the forward direction of your player. And same thing, of course, goes for the Cine Machine camera. Just make sure that it's actually facing properly forward. And now on this character mail, you can see it actually already has an animator slot, which we can just make an animator for. So in my animations folder here as well, I'm gonna go create, I'm gonna go to animation, and I can select animator controller. And this is just gonna be a player animator. And now we can drag and drop this player animator onto the player, and we're ready to get started animating. So double clicking the player animator should open up the animator window. And now what we want to do is essentially we want to create a movement uh, blend tree. This is essentially the best way, in my opinion, to work with movement stuff. But first, before we do that, we have gotta go into the parameters and we need to figure out what values changes how he moves. And for my sake, it's gonna be the, the forward speed and the sideways speed. We can call it forward, we can call it whatever we want. So I'm gonna make a forward float and a sideways float. And that's essentially it. So now that we have these, I'm gonna create state machine, new blend tree. And here we have the blend tree and I'm just gonna call this movement. There we go. So now this is our default state. And that being said, we might also actually want an idle animation. So let's also just make an idle state and let's make this into our default. And then we can create transitions into the movement state. So I'm just gonna create a transition into the movement state. And this transition will move there if the forward is greater than, let's just do greater than 0 0.1, just to give it a little bit. I'm gonna remove exit time and that should essentially be it. And then we can also make a separate transition, which will be not if the forward, but if the sideways is also greater than 0 0.1, like that. And then it'll move back out to the idle state if, and we're gonna, sorry, remove exit time. Did I do that? Nope, there we go. And then we're also gonna move back out of the idle state is if the forward is less than 0 0.1 and the sideways is less than 0 0.1. There it goes. Now it should move back and forth between the idle and movement state. And I just realized I don't actually have an idle animation. So let me just show you me downloading that real quick, just so you can see how that works. I'm going here, I'm just gonna search for idle. I'm gonna find some idle animation that I like, just one that's just standing around. I'm just gonna pick this one, I think that's pretty generic. And I'm just gonna hit download and I'm just gonna do it without skin because I don't need the skin, FBX for Unity and I'm gonna hit download. Now with this downloaded, I can drag and drop it into my animations folder like so. I'm just gonna rename it real quick. So it's just called idle. And then I'm gonna call it idle in here in the animation, allow loop time and make the rig into a humanoid like that. So now here in the idle, we can just drag and drop the idle animation in here, which is this file underneath. You could also just expand it here and you'll see all your animations. Now, there we go. Going into the movement blend tree, this is where things get a little bit more fun. Essentially, we decide what we want this blend tree to be. I want this to be 2D simple direction. 
which will use parameters of forward and parameters of sideways. And then we can add a motion field, which is essentially the animation, right? So we want the normal running forward. I want the new motion for running backwards. And then I want two of them for running sideways. So straight right, and then I'm gonna add straight right again, but I'm gonna mirror this one by this little bool out here. So let's just start by setting everything to zero and let's talk about the logic a little bit. So as you can see, our forward is our X and our sideways is our Y in this case. So that's important to keep in mind because we've got to think about what are the values for us to be in what state. So for example, if we are moving forward and we're not moving sideways, well then we want to be in the running state. So as you can see here, if I set it into the forward state, now it'll run. Uh, I actually really quickly, I'm just gonna invert these just because I like the X being sideways because that's what it is in world space. So that makes more sense to me. So essentially we wanna run forward when the forward is one, wanna run backwards when the back when the forward is minus one. We wanna run to the right when the sideways is one and wanna run to the left when sideways is minus one. I hope that makes sense. The forward and sideways essentially the directions that you're moving. So in our case, let's say forward is one, backwards is minus one. Strafing to the right is one and strafing to the left is minus one. And there we go. Now, the way that you can see it is if we start the plant tree, so you can see the, the guy here, and then I'm gonna start modifying it over here on the left. So for example, if sideways is one, well then he's running to the right. If sideways is minus one, he's running to the left. And if I set this back to zero, if he's running forward, he's gonna be running forward. If and if he runs backwards, he's gonna be running backwards. And the funny thing is now we can mix them. So for example, if you are running backwards and to the right, He'll do this if he's running backwards to the left, he'll do this or forwards to the right, to the left, sorry, and forwards to the right, he'll be doing like this. So essentially, this is a, how a blend tree works and all we now have to do is just modify the animator forward and sideways. So let's go back into our player character, I just closed it and make sure that the animator of course is of course set up. And where we can always preview the animations here is if we open the window tab, go into animation and the animation tab and we add that down here. Then we can actually select one of the animations, for example, the idle, we can play that and we can see it on our character. So there's the idle, we can see the running here, and this is how it looks. See, there's something messed up with his foot. Uh, I am not an animator though, so if somebody knows how to fix that, please do uh, let me know in the comments. I don't work that much with animations, so I'm just gonna leave this for now. I've seen this before, but I can't remember. I think it's something to do with the bone setup. Option from the future here, I found a solution for the weird animation leg bug. Essentially, if you go to Mixer Mode, download the T-Pose with the skin, that's very important. You go on the rig and set it to Humanoid and hit Apply. You can now select all your other animations and where you have Humanoid selected, you say Copy from other avatar instead of Create from this model. And then you drag and drop the export T-Pose avatar into the source and it just seems to mag magically fix the leg. Now it looks normal for some reason. And now in order to have them synchronize, we essentially just want to add the network animator component here. It'll automatically have grabbed this animator and I'm not gonna auto sync components, but I'm gonna keep it on Roth. The reason why I don't wanna auto sync parameters is because I just like calling it directly through the network animator. Now, if your setup is already animating on the animator, you can just keep this on and it'll, you know, essentially auto animate whatever happens to the animator. I just like going through the network animator instead. I think it's cleaner. And if you wanna follow me, I think you should do that too. So opening up the player controller script, I can now set a reference to the animator as well. So we're gonna do serialize field, private network animator, and that's gonna be our animator. And now with this network animator, we essentially have to handle the animations. Now, this should hopefully be easy enough to do because we are already handling our movement uh, in here. So you can see the velocity is essentially how we wanna move our character and we can actually use that. So let me just uh, mark it here and handle animations underneath. And essentially we want the uh, animator dot set float because they are floats and the one was called forward. And this is essentially going to be our uh, velocity dot set that's how we're going to be moving on the set and but the thing is though before we set this directly i'd actually want this to um take into account uh the normalized velocity uh, so that way we'll be able to always get a one or zero or for that sake we're already actually handling our input i realize so we could just use that so we just do that i can call it sideways as well and then we use the horizontal one and i actually think that might just work as i mentioned in the very first video i'm doing this on the fly as well so uh you know, don't don't shoot me if this doesn't uh, always work the first try. I'm just gonna fix it and you're gonna be able to see my debugging process as well. And of course, I forgot to set the animator on the prefab, classic me, just gonna drag and drop it in there, save the prefab and press play again. And there we go, now you can see our animator is, is playing, kind of. So he's not going left or backwards, which is interesting, but he's going right and forwards. 
Oh, and also we have root motion on animator, which is stupid. So going back to the prefab, just don't apply root motion. You should never do that. Or at least not in this case, you shouldn't do that. Um, and we need to figure out why isn't it going left and backwards. So one thing we can do is I can always just debug out these values. And I think I'm going to do that just to figure out how the values actually move. I'm just going to call this vertical and then I'm going to debug it out and say vertical. And we can also debug out the horizontal to have a look at how that looks. Now let's keep an eye on the console. So if, oops, I need to go to the bottom of the console. So if I hold W, if I hold S, that is minus one. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so it is actually going minus one on both of them. So why is the animator not doing its thing? So let's have a look. Forward, sideways. I mean, these seem to be correctly set up. Okay, what we can do is we can actually keep an eye on the animator while playing. So this might be the good next natural step. So let's go and click on the character that is animated and we should be able to see the values here change live. So you can see they do actually get set to minus one. The animations just aren't playing for some reason. That's weird, so the values are setting correctly. So why would the animations not be playing is the question. Is there something wrong with the setup of the animations? They should be fine. Oh, you know what, this is, okay, I know why. Uh, this is my mistake. This is because the idling state, um, <clears throat> it needs to also change into the movement state when they are negative. So of course, this is if it is greater than minus 0.1 and greater than minus 0.1 on the sideways as well. Uh, this is on the going back, transitioning back. And on the transitioning in as well, we still need two more transitions. So we also need a transition uh, here. Let me put this back down, which is if the forward is less than minus 0 0.1 and, the si and we've got to do the same thing for the sideways. So let's do that find the correct one here and this sideways is less than minus 0 0.1 there we go. i just forgot the cases of them being negative as well in these so this should do it so now that these are set up i hope that makes sense there we go so now it actually enters and stays in the state correctly and you can see we go back to the idle now let me try and have the other client join as well and as you can see now he should animate fine as well he still has a wonky foot we'll figure out how to solve that at some point but you can see the animations are now networking and seemingly working just fine so great we now got the animations working and set up. I can remove this debug again. We no longer need that. And now we're actually networked, networking our animations. And I don't think we have time to set up our rigging. So that's going to be in a future video. So hopefully this was helpful to you. We can, of course, always make things better. I hope this was helpful to you. And I hope you leave a like, comment and subscribe. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.